The Mercedes-Benz R107 is a two-seater roadster with optional rear emergency seats. The sister model C107 has an extended wheelbase compared to the Roadster and is a five-seater coupé with two full rear seats and a restricted-use middle seat. The cars are part of the Mercedes-Benz SL series. Mercedes-Benz SL. The SL107 series, launched in 1971 as the successor to the so-called Pagoda, Mercedes-Benz W113, established a new design line at Mercedes-Benz with its wide-beam H4 headlights and large fluted taillights. A slight wedge shape indicated improved aerodynamics. The designer responsible for this series was once again Friedrich Geiger, who had already been responsible for the timeless creations of the 300 SL, including the Roadster, and the Mercedes-Benz 500K. The appearance of the R107 was style defining for Mercedes-Benz design in the 1970s. Many details can also be found in the S-Class, the Mercedes-Benz W116, which was introduced in 1972. As with the previous model, the USA represented the largest sales market. The majority of the vehicles were equipped with the large volume 5.8 engines. The A-pillar was designed to be particularly firm for rollovers, and an airbag had been available since 1982. With the 450 SLC, 450 SLC 5.0 and 500 SLC models, Daimler-Benz took part in major rallies in the late 1970s, such as the 30,000 km Vuelta a la America del Sud, 1977, the Safari Rally, 1979, and the Bandama Rally, 1979-1980. A successor model had already been developed in the early 1980s, but was shelved in favor of the W124 and W201 mid-range series. As a result, the R107 series remained in the range for a total of 18 years. The successor to the SL, R107, was the R129 presented in 1989, while the official successor to the SLC, C-107, was the SEC from the 126 series presented in 1981. The 107 Roadster was heavily revised over the years. Just like the powertrains of the S-classes of the time, the R-107 was also subject to constant change in order to adapt to changing environmental regulations. In the process, the power output and displacement also changed several times. In 1985, the Mercedes-Benz R107 was probably revised most extensively as a two-seater roadster that could optionally be equipped with emergency seats in the rear. From then on, the vehicles could be delivered to customers with a catalytic converter if desired. The catalytic converter then went into production as standard in 1986, and from 1989 this component was expressly mandatory. From 1989 onwards, the model versions without a catalytic converter could therefore no longer be delivered. These vehicle models were known as roof versions from 1987 onwards, as they were so-called retrofit vehicles whose catalytic converter could be removed in an emergency. The Mercedes-Benz R107 was produced in Sindelfingen until 1989, its successor was manufactured in Bremen from 1989. Mercedes-Benz SLC, 1971-1981 Based on the W111 series, the tail fin, Daimler-Benz had presented both a coupé and a cabriolet in 1961, which was to be followed by a new model after an appropriate construction period. However, the next basis, the slowly maturing new S-Class, was not available in time to present a coupé based on it at the beginning of the 1970s. So the SL basis was used, especially as a far-developed design by Carl Wilfert was already waiting to be realized in the Sindelfingen prototype shop. The factory designation was accordingly C107. The SLC, as the sports coupé was officially called, had its premiere at the Paris Motor Show in October 1971. Up to the windshield, its exterior corresponded to that of the Roadster. Above the five-seat passenger compartment stretches the flat roof, which opens into a huge, bi-directionally curved, very sloping rear window, which in turn dictates a comparatively great length for the rear end and whose trunk lid has a slightly convex contour, in contrast to the concave shape on the Roadster, which follows the pagoda-like hardtop, something that had given its name to the previous W113 model. In the side view, the length is documented by the longer wheelbase, 2820 x 2460 mm, and also by the line of the side windows, which, as is customary on a Mercedes-Benz coupe, are fully retractable, with no interfering B-pillar. In the case of the SLC, however, this issue presented a difficulty. The short distance between the door and the rear wheel arch called for a complicated and therefore potentially failure-prone turn and tilt-lowering mechanism to allow the rear side windows to be fully retracted. 
Carl Wilfert's way out of this dilemma was the later stylistically not uncontroversial, but highly distinctive, double-glazed, visors, with the built-in louvers that subdivide the side window and reduce it in size so that the front movable part can be completely recessed. The louvered side windows as well as the fluted taillights were Pininfarina's idea and were first seen on a 1967 study. For the first time, the standard first aid kit was stowed in a special recess under the rear window of this car, the model for many subsequent Mercedes-Benz models until 1995. The SLC was offered from 1971 to 1981, first only as 350 SLC, then from 3 1970 thirds as 450 SLC, from 1974 as 280 SLC, only in the last year from 8 80 to 780 firsts as 380 SLC, from 8 1977 as 450 SLC 5.0 and also only in the last year as 500 SLC, with the same engines and transmission equipment as the Roadster. There was number 420 SLC, because at that time the parallel models of the W126 series were already on the market. One exception was the 450 SLC 5.0 from 1978 to 1980, in which the new light alloy V8 5 liter was initially launched. This car also received a front spoiler for the first time in the 107 series and a rubber lip as a rear spoiler. The CW value of the SLC proved to be significantly better than that of the SL, enabling it to achieve slightly better performance despite an additional weight of 45 to 50 kilograms. Over the course of its 10-year history, the SLC found a total of 62,888 buyers. Safety and optional equipment. The new SL set new standards in the field of passive safety. Bella Bahraini's safety concept with front and rear crumple zones and the shape retaining passenger cell. The three-box principle was also reflected in the 1971 SL. The backbone of the R107 was not simply a shortened and reinforced sedan floor assembly as in its predecessor but an independent frame floor assembly with a closed carton tunnel and box-shaped cross members and longitudinal members, whose special feature was different sheet thicknesses and the resulting defined crumple behavior. Since the SL was to be an open car without tear bars, the only safety potential for the Roadster in the event of a rollover was the A-pillars including the windshield. They were redesigned from the ground up to provide 50% greater strength than the previously built version. In addition, the windshield was bonded into the frame to increase strength. This resulted in considerable resistance in the roof drop test, making the open car permissible in the USA even without a tear bar. The rear window in the hardtop was also bonded. Even the interior featured trend-setting innovations. The dashboard was shock-absorbent and foam padded in both the upper and knee areas. Another innovation was the four-spoke steering wheel, built according to the findings of accident researchers. The tried and tested impact absorber remained. But the steering wheel rim, the four spokes, the padding plate and the hub were encased in polyurethane foam. The telescopic safety steering column and the steering gear located behind the front axle complete the safety measures under the sheet metal. The vehicles have three-point seat belts as standard. The door locks were also redesigned so that they do not spring open by themselves after accidents, but can still be opened by hand. Easy to operate, the fastest of all convertibles and roadsters was the SL Soft Top, an ingeniously simple design that dispensed with any automatism. When folded down, it disappears under a cover, as it did on its predecessors. The standard equipment also includes the hardtop roof, which is recommended for winter use and can be converted in just a few steps to give the roadster the appearance of a coupe. The seats were available from the outset with head restraints and automatic seat belts. On request, instead of the standard luggage rack behind the seats, a type of seat was available at extra cost, but this was only permitted for children weighing up to 30 kilograms and was very cramped. Comfort was ensured by the spontaneously reacting heating system, which worked independently of the stowage pressure and was controlled via flaps, supported by a new type of air conditioning in the doors. A small gag was the rechargeable flashlight integrated in the glove compartment. Dirt repellent trim on the A pillars and exterior mirrors ensures good visibility even in bad weather. The windshield wipers, which are arranged close together in the center of the car, keep 70% of the windshield surface clear, are optimally positioned in the airstream and do not lift off even at higher speeds. Over the years, the range of passive and also active safety equipment continued to grow. For example, ABS was available from 1980 and an airbag for the driver from 1982. As usual with Mercedes-Benz, the list of equipment extras was long and could make the car considerably more expensive. From power windows and heated seats to air conditioning and the B-neck car phone, many things were offered as options.
Export models. The 560 SL, 1985-1989, was designed as an export model for the American, Australian and Japanese markets and was never officially offered in Europe. Due to stricter crash regulations that a collision up to 8 km per hour had to be survived without damaging the body, the US versions featured the protruding bumpers typical of the time, which lengthened the SL by 250 mm and also increased the weight. The bumpers, bumpers of the US models, which are often described as ugly, are rust-free. On the 560 SL, US version, moreover, most of the body parts, such as hoods, doors, bumpers, hardtop, etc. are marked with the original vehicle VIN, vehicle identification number, chassis number. From this, any previous accident damage can be deduced. Replaced parts are marked with an R for replacement. These 560 US versions were delivered from the factory in largely full equipment. The only additional optional equipment available was heated seats. The Type 450 SLC 5.0, from 1980-500, SLC, had a special feature. To save weight, partly because of the factory's intended rally use, the large hoods were made of aluminum. Furthermore, it received a small rubber rear spoiler as standard, a novelty at Daimler-Benz. The 450 SLC 5.0 and 500 SLC models differed not only in their designations, while the predecessor 450 SLC 5.0 drove a three-speed automatic transmission with wider gear sets to match the high torque, the otherwise identical 500 SLC was driven for the first time by a four-speed automatic transmission that could only be built to last with improved materials and manufacturing processes.